Hello and welcome to this edition of Business Spotlight. My name is Reza Kodavis from Action Coach. I'm thrilled to be joined today by special guest Will Welton from Flow Oral Care. Hi, Will. Hey, Reza. Great to be here. Hi. Great to have you here with us. Welcome to the to the program. Um, so, Will, um, I'll get straight into it. Please tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and and the nature of your business. Sure. Yeah. So I'm I'm Will Welton. I'm one of the co-founders of Flow Oral Care, um, along with Javier Navarro. So we founded Flow um, over three years ago now. Um, what is Flow? Um, we're a subscription platform, and we're looking to transform the way that people manage and take um, take control of their oral health. So what we've built um, is a subscription service to do just that. Uh, we started life as a subscription box, sending fresh toothpaste, brushes, floss to people every three months, trying to get them into a better routine. What really interests us is the link between oral health and systemic diseases. Yeah. Um, this is something that a lot of people are unaware of. Um, and there's a huge personal, societal and economic cost to that, which is only getting worse. So we want to change the way that people manage their oral health and not only improve um, the, the, people, the length that people live their lives for, but making sure those are healthy life here. So that's a big focus for us. So the key products that we've been working on for the last 18 months and the real figurehead of the business um, is an at-home or in-clinic saliva test. Um, we're looking at a range of protein-based biomarkers in there to use that as a window into oral and systemic inflammation. So to catch disease before it's developing, before it's too late, getting clinicians, consumers to take control of that and really take um transform you know, kind of see change in a way oral health in this country okay great yeah absolutely sounds amazing and what what's inspired you to to get into this area and and more importantly start your own business so in terms of the area i'm i'm not a dentist uh, by trade a lot of people um ask me that so my my background is in consumer roles, uh, kind of commercial roles in the in the drinks industry, primarily. Um, what inspired me to start this area? Um, I think we've always been interested in healthcare um, and was keen to start a business within the healthcare space. I think the dentistry is very siloed um, as an area. So I think commercial, I thought there was an opportunity and also a necessity um, to bring that into the mainstream and get, get people, consumers to understand that. And so I think that was one point. It's quite a old-fashioned industry in some senses so it's it is right for disruption and I think there is you know healthcare in many ways is the final frontier in terms of the next wave of digitalization um and I think you know we want to be we want to be at the forefront of that we want to help drive that agenda forward so that's um I suppose that's some kind of interest there um on a again on a kind of I suppose on a on another level this link between oral health and systemic diseases, a lot of people are completely unaware of this. Um, but if we can try and, if we can show to people that poor oral health is increasing the risk of diabetes, bronchitis, arthritis, Alzheimer's, um, and actually get people to not only reduce the cost on a personal level, financial level of poor oral health, but also in later life, the risk of developing all of these pretty serious diseases, that's really gonna, improve the way that we address healthcare um in this country and i think you know i think worldwide as well so those are the motivations to start it and i think on a personal level interested in healthcare um interested in this space and i started to see quite a lot of d2c models at the time um within this space from razors to contact those lenses to medications i think there was an opportunity there at least to start in that space so that was the um, I think those are kind of motivations, generally speaking, around around starting play. Yeah, so some amazing reasons to 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 get into that area. Um, and we know, obviously, as business coaches, we know business isn't easy. Uh, there are challenges, and um, startups tend to have more challenges, I guess. Um, what what were your challenges at the early stage? Challenges at early stage. There's no. There's definitely no shortage of yeah. <laughs> at early stage. Like it's right. it's always hard work. So I think the I think the challenges are are plentiful. Um, I mean, for us, we, you know, we are building. We're using saliva as a window into oral and systemic inflammation. Like I said, 
there is a not this is really interesting um it's, you know it's a non-invasive way of, of look, looking getting insight into people's health but there is no there's very little um if none at all infrastructure for saliva testing um unlike blood where there are you know thousands of service mm -hmm. laboratories so we built that infrastructure from scratch so you know finding the right machine <laughs> the right machinery to do that the right immunologists who can actually understand what's happening um in the saliva building machine learning around that I think just and, and then a, there's a huge amount of regulation and red tape as there should be because this is this is people's health and it's human tissue yeah. so I think there's that's definitely been a challenge navigating that world there um other challenges I mean I think I think for any startup is you know unless you're highly profitable funding is a necessity um that is also a challenge um I think particularly in the current climate so I would say there's a challenge and then other challenges um and these are all good challenges by the way that can be yeah, that can be overcome and they're very rewarding to overcome but I think hiring I would say is also a challenge um you know great businesses need great people um and that's absolutely critical I think at startups especially when you're a small team like us of less than 10 people so finding the right people um who not only are specialists in their area and are good at that job but also have the right risk appetite the right level of patience um to really bond and to get things done cope with high levels of ambiguity listen learn adapt is is really is really important um but that's not easy so it takes time um and time is a time is a commodity that's in very uh you know there's not a lot of it in a in yeah, early startup. so I think navigating that kind of necessity to hire quickly find the right people um but whilst the clock is ticking that's a that's a big challenge but we've we've got a we've got a team of eight people now and we've got some really great hires who are all you know kind of international team or specialists in different areas um so that is a challenge that we've managed to overcome but we'll you know we'll, that's something we'll need to keep on addressing in the same way that there will be regulations to, to push forward with and there will be um you know there'll be funding environments that become that's easier and then it's more challenging at times so all meaningful significant challenges um but challenges that are also possible to overcome and very rewarding in doing so absolutely and help you kind of develop as a company right and uh, uh, get you on the right track so um, staying on a on a on a topic of hiring and and people um and and you know I guess from what you said that you've done that successfully how do you go about it what what do you look for in an employee to fit to fit your team and to be able to work work along with everyone yeah. else what are That's the quality good question so I think the first thing I would look for um is meaningful and genuine interest I think it's pretty easy to scope that out whether people are just interested in a kind of you know salary or a quick fix or maybe even a bit of desperation just to to land a job um so I think that's I think that would be the first thing to someone who really who is genuinely interested in what we're doing that's that's pretty easy to work out based on the questions that people ask that would be a key attribute that I look for for people really genuine interest uh secondly the ability to listen um listening and learning I think having that curiosity that ability to absorb information um I think that's really important just to maintaining a level of hunger also understanding and um you know soaking up different different areas of the business different opinions um different strategies I think that is really really important other qualities um that we look for at flow um I think a will to win is really really important at early stage um you've got to you've got to sing for your supper you've got to really fight for fight for things so I think that kind of competitive edge and that ability to um well, I suppose to survive in some senses and then in other ways to to start beating the competition is really really important so definitely look for that um and then final points I would say the ability you know kind of flexibility the ability to cope with ambiguity with things that change quite quickly um, and not get frustrated by that or be too rigid that's really important um and then the final thing just you know just just good people people that you can um that you can you know you can enjoy 
Work having with. lunch with, yeah. Uh, yeah. having a laugh with, high energy. That's I think that's really important because if you if you get along well and you bond, um, then the team starts to be starts to bond and people do better work when they're when they're happy, they're relaxed to the extent that's um, that's possible at times and um, and, and enjoyed enjoying things. Yeah, and it was very interesting that in in all the things that you mentioned, it was all about attitudes and soft skills and not necessarily technical skills. I mean, obviously, I'm sure that technical skills come into it. You you, you would hire. Well, I'd say I'd say that that goes without saying. I think that's yeah. the kind of, that's a given. <laughs> that's, well, that's that's a given. You can't hire someone who have all those those attributes. Yeah. But if they can't if they're not a data scientist or they're not a dentist, then yeah. Unfortunately, it's a it's a non-starter for yeah sure really understandable reasons. But I'm saying once you're providing you've got strong technical skills in a certain discipline, I think that's then those are then the soft attributes that yeah yeah towards. absolutely absolutely. And so obviously you uh, I guess you you're an interrupter in your business. You you know you you're doing something new. Uh, I don't know how competitive your industry is, but but how do you stay ahead of curve? How do you make sure that you you're relevant and you're you know kind of competitive and um, you know kind of keep ahead of everyone else? Yeah, so I think I'm, I'm gonna I'll focus here on the on the key for us, which is the which is the saliva test. So this is this is pretty cutting edge science. Um, this isn't something that is being adopted certainly by consumers or dentists yet, but I think a lot of people are starting to be aware of all of these links between oral and systemic health and the fact that saliva could be a really effective window to capture things early here and actually get people to live healthier life years, reduce the cost of all diseases and all these other diseases like diabetes that are coming from essentially bacteria drip feeding into people's bodies over, over a number of years. So how do we, I think, just naturally the field we're in is a kind of you know we're pioneering this is a new frontier um in dentistry and healthcare so i think that was the first thing there are other people um doing this as well which is a good thing um you know, that's kind of healthy competition um you know, this is a big market this is a it's healthcare so a lot of people this requires multiple players in order for to make meaningful change on a global level um but on a on a commercial level how do we stay ahead um, so I think you know the key thing that we are building is our own proprietary machine learning um, uh, machine learning platform. We're looking at clinical data sets here as well. Um, so I think building that the ability to transport saliva samples from different countries into the UK, analyze them through our own model there. That's um, that's quite unique, and that's not something you can just take off the shelf um, or even get the data sets quickly to to build. So that's something we've been working on for 18 months and we'll continue to go ahead and refine um we'll hopefully be able to protect that um as well in terms of intellectual property so i think that's in terms of competitive advantages that's the kind of space you're in and then that's what we are doing not just to protect what we're doing um the first point i would make is the reason we're doing that is to give us greater precision um that's going to enable better monitoring and diagnosis for healthcare that's the that is the that is the leading reason we're doing that but coupled with that on a commercial basis, that does give us a strong element of protection um, that builds a, a moat around what we're doing, um, which would be quite hard to replicate um, at speed, even with significant financial resources. Okay, great. And um, I guess a question that I wanted to ask you earlier, but uh, you know, it was quite interesting to hear about the technical side of it. Uh, going back to kind of business side, would would you do anything differently now you know you've been in this journey for for a few years now is there anything that you would change in terms of approach um or you know what you did there's probably lots i'm just trying to, <laughs> trying to that's, think of us so can you just repeat the question one more time yes yeah, so i just i just wanted to know obviously there's you know there's been challenges to start with and you know you had a journey to come in here uh, to, to get to where you are um, are there any things that you would you would do differently if if that is the case? You know, uh, would, would would you would you change anything? Would you do something differently? Would, yeah. would you go bigger earlier? You know, you know, different people have different different um, uh, takes on that. Uh, what would we have done differently? I think.
Maybe it's a it's a good question. Um, I'm not sure how we would have, we would have done it, but it started on a research only basis. So be before our slider test is commercially available, starting to test that um, with dentists and consumers earlier, just so we could get some early proof points. We're we're doing that. We've just started doing that at the moment. There have been barriers to doing that, but I think we could have been a bit more agile um, in rather than trying to start testing with something which is relatively sophisticated, maybe just picking one marker and starting with that as a test point, just so we had some early data points and proof of kind of traction. So that's probably, that would be, I would say is the one thing that I think we could have done sure. differently. There will be plenty more um, other things we could have done differently. Um, yeah. Probably focus on that. Focus, but I think focused are. I think our hiring has been really good, um, but I think initially we maybe maybe we focused on more kind of marketing roles before we were ready for that, and we haven't hired any marketing roles, but that was a, maybe a little bit of a distraction. So I think focused on mm -hmm. on focused on take on hiring, focused on kind of the the attention and the time spent yeah. it takes yeah. hiring and CVs, all of that on looking for people who are kind of builders at this stage. So people who can build rather yeah. than people who are more sales based. Because I think it's I think it's very easy as a startup to kind of think, you know, you've launched and then your first hires are all marketing and everything sticks and it's all it's all fantastic and you're you're running out of stock, etc. Um I, that that wasn't that wasn't <laughs> that wasn't the case for us and it required more building and refining. So I think I think yeah, my takeaway there would be just focusing attention and kind of on the delivery and the, and, and, the, and, and, and capacity yeah. on look on you know the right people who are going to build something really really yeah. powerful and exciting here, um, and then the marketing hires come in due course. Yeah. And that's a very important, I think, interesting share for 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 people who watch this to experience similar things and to to be aware of it. Um, so what 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 does the future hold for you guys? You know, next three to five years. Where do you think see yourself? Yeah, that's a good question. So I mean, we've got to, we've got to launch this test um, in the short term. So we're looking to do that at the end of Q1 next year. Um, we are also looking to wrap up a uh, one to two million seed funding round um, within that period as well. Once we've completed the testing of our um, research only saliva test, we'll illustrate. The demand for this, the fact that the science works, how this is going to be commercialized through trials we're doing with dental clinics, diabetes communities primarily to start with. Um, so in the next three to five years for us, how do they look? Um, I think you know, getting getting meaningful commercial traction. Um, that's got to be the I think that's the kind of key objective after we've kind of got to the end of this this build phase here. So what does that mean in practice? Using this test potentially as a bolt on or a or a kind of upsell i suppose in dental clinics really starting to catch people early on that journey also in the kind of i suppose people that i would refer to maybe as the worried well on more of a kind of direct to consumer basis getting people to take control of their oral health to go to a dentist before it's too late rather than focusing on purely on the aesthetics um, and assuming that just because their teeth don't hurt that everything is fine so getting getting people to take control. So I'd say the you know, the next next year is all about getting that early next kind of one to two years all about that early commercial traction. Um, I think after that we'd like to have some slightly more ambitious goals. So we've got some grant funding, 419k grant from Innovate UK at the moment. Um, we would like to pursue further grant funding and government subsidies potentially from the Department of Health um, so that we can actually use this test to for the people who can't necessarily afford it and can't haven't got time to go to a dentist so we can essentially use this test to kind of heat map areas of the uk that are at risk and triage patients so we're not i think the you know the nhs dentistry crisis and it definitely it definitely is a crisis i don't think that's um that's hype or exaggeration there are going to be multiple things that are needed to solve that um we're definitely not and it, you know we're definitely not the solution on our own. Um, I think that needs multiple things from policy to more dentists. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of different strands there, but I think we can definitely be part of the solution because part of that solution needs to be consumers actually taking control 
of their oral health before it gets too late. Dentists having the ability to capture things early, you know, through cutting edge science. Um, but maybe a specific point in terms of in terms of waiting lists, that's the kind of key problem, one of the key problems at the moment with dentistry. So people are, it's taking a hell of a long time to see a dentist and you're hearing of people who've got, have got, couldn't see a dentist for two years and they're driving 200 miles to see a dentist. And that's, that's not good. You've also got people who are, who would fall into the worried well category, who are seeing a dentist three times a year and a hygienist every time. And they are, they may not need to see the dentist that much. So I think if we can use our test as a way to triage people and actually cut down those waiting times, get some of the worried well out, keep them operating on the same level, but bring in some of the people who maybe didn't know there was a problem and prioritize that and use the data um, from our saliva test as a benchmark to accurately triage people there. I think that would be definitely be a meaningful um element to to you know to much broader solutions that, that's needed to to address the the oral care crisis in the uk absolutely yeah absolutely and so yeah i i just wanted to wish you obviously um um success and uh all the best for you know the, the funding that you're going for the developments that you're pursuing um uh and um whatever else you kind of got planned in your journey um really appreciate your time today um enjoyed our chat learned a lot actually about the domain um uh, very 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 interesting subject and um it was great to meet you it was a pleasure to meet you thank you very much Reza. thank you will